Good morning, CSG friends and CSG family. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Amen. And uh, are you thankful to the Lord? Amen. Are you grateful to Him? Amen. Can we lift our voice and let us say with one voice, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You must malakas, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So nakita ko excitement niyo. Are you excited? Amen. Praise the Lord. Major. So, the day, ah. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you have your Bibles with you? So, uh, today actually is, uh, tapating ko na kayo, ah. Today, maybe, uh, you will get hurt. <laughs> your heart will be cut. Amen. But before that, baka biglang mag-alisan kayo eh. <laughs> but before that, uh, just tell your neighbor, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. Uh, I just want to ask something uh, about your favorites. Okay? Are you ready? So, turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, what is your favorite song? Iba, ay, siguro iba, hindi niyo pakilala, no? Maybe you don't uh, know your neighbor well or you don't know their names and uh, this is a privilege. I mean, a chance for you to know their names. Amen? So, uh, okay, that's one. So, sinagot ba kayo? Hindi. Sinagot. <laughs> it means hindi natutulog yung katabi niyo, ha? Amen? What's your favorite, uh, ganun din ulit, what's your favorite uh, book Wala. Siguro hindi kayo fan reader. So, sa so marami sa ating mga Pilipino, it's not a fan reader. No? And uh, definitely, you don't know, you don't have your favorite writer. Okay, I, I think this one, uh, lahat tayo sasagot dito. Turn to your neighbor. What is your favorite food? <laughs> wow. What's your favorite food? Okay. <laughs> okay, sa mga parents, who is your favorite child? Yun lang. Okay, who is your favorite celebrity? Taylor Smith. Yeah, be honest. Uh, you know, Brad Pitt. Amen. Okay. Tigilan na natin yan. <laughs> Is it a sin to, uh, you know, to have varieties of food uh, that you will uh, prepare to eat uh, tonight on your dinner? Siguro hindi naman, no? Is it a sin that uh, you have your favorite characters in the Bible? Because for me, after reading the Bible, the whole Bible, it becomes my favorite book, actually. Bible is the best-selling book of all time. Do you know that? Kaya, maging uh, curious tayo, bakit ganun, di ba? The best-selling book of all time. Amen. Uh, for thousands of thousands of years, I mean, when Bible was, uh, you know, uh, published. So, is it a sin to make a bookmark of your favorite, uh, you know, website? Amen? Lagay nyo sa favorite bar ninyo. Amen? So, do you, you can have a quick access in the future. So, as I said, after reading the whole Bible, I have my favorite characters, I have my favorite verse. And uh, one of the, my favorite verse is John 24.15. Who among you know John 24.15? Wala si masagot, pero pag narinig nyo, ah, yung pala yun. John 24:15 is of course Joshua is the one who's uh, who's speaking and uh, he was uh, talking to the whole nation of Israel and then Joshua 24 He says it I said John 24 sorry Joshua 24:15 pala Joshua 24 walang John 24 Good Testing ko na kayo kung tulog kayo 
Joshua 24, 15 is, of course, Joshua was speaking and uh, he was actually uh, finished, you know, conquering this uh, land. They, they are in the promised land. And uh, he was old and uh, this, this uh, was his uh, last speech. So he told uh, the nation, you see what the Lord had done, you know, Yahweh, our Lord God, serve the Lord, Jesus said. But choose this day whom you will serve. If it's evil to serve the Lord your God, or you want to serve the false gods of the Amorites, choose whom you will serve. And Joshua declared, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Yes. Uh, he made a choice. Even the Bible, uh, Moses, when he spoke to the nation of Israel, choose life or choose death. Amen. Choose blessing or choose curse. If you obey God, if you choose to obey God, there will be blessing. If you choose to disobey God, you will what? Receive curse. You know, make a choice. Actually, Decide. Make a choice. Because God will not force himself to you and to me. It's your choice. Let us pray. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning that you have gathered us as a church, Lord, in this place. And Lord, we are so hallelujah, excited because we know, God, that you have prepared a banqueting able for us, O oh God, to feast. God, make our hearts ready, O oh God. Our ears open, Lord. Lord God, as we submit everything to you, whatever, Lord, the enemy will try to do, oh God, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. He shall flee in Jesus' name. That there will be no destruction to us, Lord. God, you said in your word, Lord, that uh, we should not neglect, O oh God, the fellowship of the believers as in the manner of some. Because we know, O oh God, Lord, that in many places right now, O oh God, all over the world, your people have gathered this Sunday, O oh God, Lord, to have fellowship, Lord, to seek you, to thank you, Lord, to praise you. And Lord, you say, because as the day is fast approaching, we should do this every, every time, O oh Lord. So that it will stir up love and stir up good works in us that will edify and build us up. Lord, thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we engage in, uh, in the many different types of relationship because we're going to take off, we're going to discuss about relationships. Amen. We people engage in many different types of relationship. There are many different categories of relationship. There is family relationship. There is your friends or friendship. I mean, husband and wife, they have their sexual relationship. You know, we have your acquaintances. You have your work relationship. And I slim it down to two types. You know, you have your personal relationship in which in a personal level, I mean, your family, your friends, your wife, your husband, they know what is your favorite things. I mean, you know their secrets. But there's also a kind of relationship that is said that I call it a functional relationship. Your acquaintances, your work, mate, your work mates, amen? And um, the people that's around you that you need their help. For example, your doctor, amen? Your teacher, hallelujah, your dentist. It's functional because it's not in a personal level. You just need them, you just talk to them because you need them, Amen? Praise the Lord. So, today in Exodus 20, 1 to 17, as what we have read, it's the Ten Commandments. How do you know, how many of us know that, that this is the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments is the moral law or the moral laws that God has given to the children of Israel, to the nation of Israel, after they were delivered for 430 years, they were enslaved in Egypt. And God delivered them through Moses, and uh, hallelujah, it was given by God in Mount Sinai. These are set or set of bi biblical principles of 
how we going to relate our lives to relate amen and revolves around god our relationship with god and our relationship with people with our fellow men praise the lord so today i titled this message life exists on two beams you know ito lang yung <laughs> word yung beams ang hirap kasi no sa tagalog what do you call that yung horizontal and vertical beam ayan okay Life exists on two beams or two poles or whatever. Amen. A lesson from the Ten Commandments. Paano natin ko connect amen sa cross? Which obviously, it's a cross. The vertical and the horizontal. So what we can get from these Ten Commandments? Sino dito nag-drive? Who is driving here? Who is using GPS? You know how, how it works? GPS, there's a satellite, right? And you got your coordinates because of the latitude and longitude. Ito na invento long time ago. Amen. Maybe you have studied it in your college, in your in your school about the latitude and longitude. You know about the equator. Our it's like an imaginary lines. Okay? The latitude is the horizontal imaginary lines and the longitude is the vertical lines. So, how you get your coordinates? When these two lines meet, amen, for example, you are here, and when you're using Google Map, if you right-click, amen, that screen, you will see your exact location on the globe. That's why in GPS, they will say, send me the pin, send me the pin. Actually, it send me the coordinates. Amen, because you don't know the place, when you got the coordinates, Man, even though it's your first time you to go to that place, you will get exactly the exact location to that place. That's how it works. Amen. Hallelujah. So you will know your exact location and exact position. So when it comes to sermon, actually, this is the least favorite of many Christians and pastors. Sermon about the Ten Commandments. Because they are mistakenly believed what Paul said, we are not under the law. So it means there's no sense to study about the law. But actually it's not. It's very important for us as a Christian, for people to know. Amen? The message or the importance of the law of God. So we tend to ignore it. That's why there are many professing Christians who don't know they are born again, but you cannot see, amen, in their lives the fruit of why they become a born again. There is no fruit of repentance because they don't know, amen, about sin. You know, the knowledge of the law brings us to the knowledge of sin. That's why there is law. Amen? That's what the Bible says. And uh, God's laws are perfect said in Psalms, God's laws are perfect. God's laws are just. And according to Jesus, He didn't abolish the law. He come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Okay? So, of course, none of us can successfully, hallelujah, keep these laws. We cannot perfect it. No matter how hard we try, we cannot perfectly follow the law. Let us see. The law is like a mirror. Imagine a mirror. Of course, for you to be able to see your reflection in the mirror, you need light. Amen? What's the sense of mirror if there's no light? Light, a mirror is the law. With the help of the light, the word of God, we can see our reflection. We can see our dirt. Amen? What, what is the problem with our, with our face? We will see our, the law will bring us the knowledge of sin. It means that as a mirror, it will help us to see our, what? Terrible condition. We will see our lives in a very scary and, uh, what? Uh, dangerous position. Amen? When we study the law, 
The law will bring us to Christ. The Bible says it's like a tutor. I mean, a, care, a caretaker. Where the law will take care of us for a moment and then afterwards, you know, as a caretaker, they will bring them back to the parents. Amen. The law brings us to Christ. Imagine a chaos or disorder in a community without a law. Right? Can you imagine that? If there is no speed camera there. No law about speed, over speeding. I can say that uh, many of us will have accident, vehicle accident. If there's no law, children will not honor their parents. Right? If there's no law, people will kill each other. Imagine if you went to your office and then you come back home and you find that there's no furniture. You want to rest. Your bed was stolen. Or maybe you went to office and you come back and your wife is, sleep, is sleeping with someone or somebody. If there's no law, there will be chaos. There will be order if there's law. Amen. So through the law comes the knowledge of sin. For example, another example, if you, for example, a doctor, and somebody came to you, your patient, and he said, I have a problem because I feel I have, my, I have a short breathing. I feel always fatigue. What will, what will the doctor do? Or what will the doctor say to that person? Will he say, ah, oh, you have sickness. So this take the medicine. Of course not. First of all, he will tell the, the patient, Okay, I will send you to the laboratory, have a general checkup, and then let's see what's the result. Okay? So after seeing it, the result, the doctor will read the result. So the next thing he will do is what? Huh? Prescribe. Prescribe? No. No. You will tell the patient, this is your problem. This is your result. I have the medicine for this, but this is your problem. That's what the Lord is, is doing to us. We will see our lives as a sinner. Amen. Who's trying hard. Hallelujah. To obey the law, to follow the law, but we cannot. So we are in a very dangerous position. Amen. If you die today and you face God on a judgment day and you are a liar, an adulterer, a murderer, an idolater, do you think you will be guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And if you are guilty, where you will go? Where? Hell. Why are you afraid to say that? It's hell. That is your situation. That is the situation of a man who are, hallelujah, paying the wages of his sin. Death. That's what sin means, death. Have you think about that? If I die today, I'm a sinner. I will go straight to hell. Because God, that's a judgment of God. Every one of us will what? Will give our account to God. Of how we live our life here on this earth. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about these two beams. A life should exist in these two beams. The first one is a vertical beam of the cross. Represents our relationship with God. It's a symbolic way to explain our relationship with God. And what is the connection of the cross and the Ten Commandments? Let's see the first three commandments. He said, you shall have no other gods before me. 
You shall not make for yourself a curved image, an idol. Amen? The work of your human hands, that's what we have sung. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So we can see the first three talks about our relationship with God. That's why I told you there's a set of biblical principles in the Ten Commandments. So the first three talks about the vertical relationship, our relationship to God. Right? Vertical. That's why when we are, what? Looking up to heaven, we are talking to God. We are praying to God. It's a vertical. Amen? We see God in, the, in our relationship directly to Him. And God wants us to have the relationship that an exclusive relationship with Him. Amen. Because in Exodus 23, it says, You shall have no other gods before me. So this one is no choice. No competition. God don't, doesn't want any competition. He doesn't want any rival. He doesn't want uh, number two, number three. No. He's not number one, but he should be the uh, only one. He said, there shall have no other gods before me. It's exclusive. Our relationship with God should be exclusive. Amen? Because God is a jealous God. He said, do not make an idol. Do not curve an idol, an image of anything that is in heaven. That's why some people, amen, they are worshiping what? The moon? They're worshiping the stars? They're worshiping the sun? They curve that image? Many people are doing that. Many people are curving the image of animals and they are worshiping it, bowing, bowing down to it. And of course, many people are curving the statue of a man or a woman, bowing down, honoring that statue, honoring that image, which is an abomination to the Lord. Idolatry is the sin that God hates so much. Amen. I told you you will get hurt. So if you have a right relationship with God, you shall not have any other gods in your life. It is important to put your relationship with God exclusive. Maybe some people will say, we don't believe in God. We don't believe that He exists. We don't see Him. The Bible makes no attempt to defend God's existence. Remember that. The Bible never attempt, makes no attempt to defend God's existence. It simply declares to us that He exists. Amen? And to tell us who He is. That's why it's important to read your Bible. What He is like and what He has done to us. What He is doing to us. Fools is the only one who will deny God's existence. That's why in the in Psalm it says, the fool, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Because it's very obvious who made, created the sun, who created all the stars in the universe, who created this earth, who created the trees, who did just go, it did just drop there and boom. Because a wrong view of God totally destroys the message of salvation. But having a right view of God is essential for us for our Christian living. Human heart is filled with questions. Amen. What is God like? What kind of God is He? 
We have these questions. Many people. But the answers, the answers to these questions, you know, affect our lives in eternal destiny. Whatever answer, you answer that question, it will affect your life. If you don't believe in life in God, it will affect your life. If you believe in God, of course it will affect your life. And your eternal destiny. There are three things, amen. We can know God. Of course, in this creation, in Romans 1:20, it says there, God has no excuse. When they face him and they will say, We don't know that there is God. He said, Man has no excuse. Because his attributes is clearly seen on his creations. His attributes, his character is clearly seen in his creation. That's the first one. So how do we know God? According to the Bible, he will know him in his word, in the Bible, in this book. We will know God, who is the true God, in this book. Amen. So those people were saying there's no God. I don't believe in God. You see, obviously, they don't read the book. The Bible. The next one is, of course, through his son, Jesus Christ. As Hebrew 1, chapter 1, verse 1 said. Amen. That in the, in the old days, God talked to us through his prophets. But nowadays, he talked to us through his son. He's the exact representation of God. His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, there's no God before me. And there's also one verse in the, in the Bible, in the passage, that says, if you worship me, don't put any gods beside me. And in Sad to say, many cathedrals, they're saying they worship the true God, but there are so many idols. You can see, in front of the altar. And they call themselves church. He said, I am a jealous God. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all the things will be added to you. Praise the Lord. But the problem is we do the opposite. We seek first the things. That's why godly treasures are not added to you. You don't know God. Because you seek first the things, the material things. The things that we can touch, the things that we can see and taste, we seek them first. Very zealous in seeking them. You know the uh, uh, Ten Commandments, the introduction is, I am the Lord your God who delivered you out of the bondage from Egypt. That's the introduction. He didn't say, oh, let us thank Moses because he delivered you from from Egypt. No. He claimed it. He is the Savior. He is the only Savior. He's telling these people, I am the Savior. I am the one who delivered you. So worship your God and Him alone. Praise the Lord. I am the God who saves. Can you imagine for 130 years in Egypt, a hopeless situation? 430 years. It's a long period of time, right? They are hopeless. The same way when I hear people, Filipinos, they will say, Philippines have no, we are hopeless in Philippines. The corruption is too much. Just like that, the prostration, maybe, that the Israelites are are thinking we are in a hopeless situation. But only for a few weeks, God delivered, amen, 
more than 2 million people out of Egypt. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. And ransack all the treasures of Egypt. They get the gold, they get the silver. They went out free and they went out also rich. That is the God who delivered them out of Egypt. But instead of thank you, Lord, what happened? These people blame God. They complain to Him. Why you brought us here in this wilderness to kill us all? We remember the watermelon. We remember the onions. We remember the leeks in Egypt. But they don't remember that God saved them from slavery. They all complain and complain to God. Very sad. There's a wrong view of God's. It will destroy the message of salvation. Some people know God as a loving God, but they will tell you if He's a loving God, why He will send people to hell. They have a wrong view of God as a loving, but not just. God is loving. But God is just. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you imagine these crooked people who live here on earth? Who killed millions and millions of people in the lives of, of course, Hitler and Stalin? Who killed millions and millions of people? And they will say they don't deserve in hell? God is love. And some people will say, if there is God, why there is suffering? Very common, we can hear from many people who make, make making an excuse to believe in God by telling you, if there is God, why innocent people suffer? Amen. I read one story of a, of a Christian. He went to the dentist I mean, to do a dental uh, checkup or cleaning. So his friend, the dentist who is his friend, you know, is an atheist. An atheist is the one who don't believe in God. And that's what he was telling his friend, this Christian. Because he knew that, that this friend, his friend is a Christian. So he's telling this uh, friend, I don't believe in God while he's cleaning the mouth. Because if there is God, why there is suffering? Of course, the man, Hallelujah, cannot talk back. And he was praying, Lord, give me, give me a message for this man, for my friend. And after that, you know, he got up and he said, this Christian man said, I don't believe in a dentist. The man laughed. The dentist laughed. How can it be? You came to me and I cleaned your mouth. And you're saying you don't believe in this. Because I have a friend who his, whose teeth is crooked. I have a, a friend who, is, who has a toothache who don't come to you. And the man said, logically, maybe they didn't come because they thought that to, to make brace is very costly. Or maybe they didn't come because they are afraid that they will be get hurt. That's why. That's why there is suffering. Because people don't want to come to God. Imagine if all the people on this earth, amen, pray to God, trust God. Hallelujah. What a safe place to live. But thank God because we come to Him. And I think many people don't want to God because they think that it will cost them something. It, it, it will cost them a costly thing that they cannot, hallelujah, they cannot let go. 
But if they think that the, the gifts that God is giving to us, the salvation is free, people are afraid to God to come because they don't know Him. They have a wrong view of God. They are afraid to Him because they are sinners. But they don't know that God is merciful and gracious, abounding in mercy, slow to anger. God hates idolatry. Amen. God hates this sin. Not only the curved images that we do with our hands, but those curved imagination of God. You understand that? A curved imagination of God. I just told you, people see us God as just loving, but not just. So, not only that, money can become your God. That's why last Sunday, what is the, the team? Jesus said what? Hallelujah. You cannot serve both two masters. Either you will hate the one or you will love the other. Or else you will despise the one or honor the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And many strayed from the faith, piercing their hearts with many sorrows. You see? If you make money your God, you will end up full of sorrow. You will end up what? Controlled by money. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Proverbs, those who love silver will not be satisfied with silver. Maybe you're wondering, these billionaires, trillionaires, that in the, list, in the Forbes list, why are they still, amen, working? Because they are not satisfied with money. It becomes their God. It's their God whom they love dearly. Praise the Lord. Maybe they are not, of course, hallelujah, you may think that, oh, those people don't have problems. Those people don't, uh, will not feel any loneliness because they have all the money in the world. Do you think so? Do you think they don't have problems? And one thing is the problem that is not solved. When they die, there's more problems. There's more sorrows. There are so many people in hell, of course, not, not, not all, not um, many, all people in hell that are filled with sorrow day and night. They don't rest day and night. The Bible says, when you go to hell, you will not rest. It's in the Bible. It's in the scripture. Have you ever amen, uh, uh, experienced not to sleep for two days or three days? You want to sleep? Cannot sleep. But here forever, you will not sleep. You will have no rest in hell. Imagine the cost of not believing in God. Imagine the cost of not believing in the message of salvation. Yes, money can be your God. Any desire or any need that you might think that is greater than God is idolatry. Any desire or need that you think that is greater than God is idolatry. Maybe it's your experiences that become your God. Your knowledge has become your God. Your job has become your God. Whenever you are feeling, I'm secure with this, my future is secure with these things, that is become your God. Check. Check your plans. 
Your future plans. What contains your plans? That after I save money, I will be secure. I don't have to worry. I will just go to the, I will just build my house. Amen. Hallelujah. Close to the beach. And I will just sit, eat, drink, and be merry. Because I have all the money in the world. Because your security, your future security depends on your savings that is become your God. Got it? Because actually, I was rebuked by God. I'm telling my own experience. Amen. That, that I was drifting away, hallelujah, from the kingdom, from the plan of God, and going to my own plan. And God is telling me, are you sure we'll still live for five years? Are you sure we'll still live for another day? And you're thinking this is your security? I am your security. I'm the one you need to trust. That's why he said, I am your God. The God, your deliverer, the God you can trust, the God who can provide for you. The God who can, hallelujah, protect you. And I am your God. There should not be any God before me. You shall not have any other God before me. Right? It's no competition, no favorites. The word favorites here is, is, is not included. But you will say, who is your favorite God? Oh, God is my favorite no, he doesn't want that. He said, no, other gods. I'm not number one, because if there's number one, there's number two. Only one. Because there's only one God. All the gods of this world are idols. They are not gods. Amen. Amen. The God who has, ear, who has eyes, but they cannot see. The God who has ears, but they cannot see. Because they are made of wood, or stone, or silver, or gold. They have hands, but they cannot touch. They have legs and feet, but they cannot walk or run. That's why when there is a fire in Philippines, we see in the, in the, in the news, they are carrying their gods because they cannot run. You need to save your God instead of saving you. What a fool, right? We have been fooled for many years. That's why it hurts. It hurts, I know, because you worship that God. You offer on that God. I know exactly. It hurts. But it's for your deliverance. So that you can have a right relationship with God. An exclusive relationship with Him. No other gods, no favoritism, exclusive. Amen? Do not, do not uh, uh, use His name in vain. How many of us are using the name of God in vain? When you get hurt, oh my God. The Hollywood films, movies, although you are not speaking that, but you keep hearing them because you love Hollywood movies. It's filled with F. It's filled with holy S. See, Holy Spirit, they change it to holy poops. The holiness becomes poops. The holy God becomes poops. And we are laughing when we are watching 
that you see pleasure to your flesh. I told you to be firm. Amen? Are you still thankful? <laughs> Grateful for this message? Yes. yes, it hurts, but it will deliver you from, your foolish, for, from our foolishness. Horizontal beam of the cross represents our relationship with people. And we can see here, amen, uh, the uh, commandments from 5 to 10. Number 5 is, honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear full witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Amen. Hallelujah. Neighbor's wife, male servant, female servant, ox. Anything that is your neighbor's, wag po nating pagnasahan in Tagalog, covet. Amen. Hallelujah. Nakita mo yung uh, naka-iPhone 15 siya. Meron na bang 15? Wala pa. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Andun, nagnanasa agad tayo. Anyway, may credit card naman. Ching! And then, naging slave ka na ng credit card. All your utang. Amen. Kasi it that hurts, Sound makikita ng ganda nga ng sound. Ting, ting, ting. That's what sin does to us. Kala natin it will not hurt us when we do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Long time ago, amen, I was uh, in my previous company. You know, there are ladies there who are talking and they are talking about their crush. And they are married women. They're talking about the crush because in our company, there are white people who have a pinpointed nose, who are tall. And they said, I have a crush on my boss. I'm a crush on my ma That manager is my crush. <sighs> and when I confront them, they said, it's just a crush. But you are lasting. Jesus said, Amen. If you lust to a if you look at a woman and lust for her, you already committed what? Adultery in your heart. Maybe you're telling it's not for me because I uh, I'm not married. I'm not committing adultery. If you lust for a man, look a man and lust for that man, you already committed an adultery within your heart. It's not only for men, even women. Amen? It's for everyone. If you, are last, if you are look to a woman and lust for her, you already committed adultery. That's what Jesus said. Because it's not only physical, it's spiritual. In Matthew 5 also, he said, if you hate your brother, you become a murderer. Jesus expounded it in a spiritual sense that all of us are dirty sinners, liars. Amen? How many lies have been made, we made in, this, in, in our lives, in our lifetime? How many lies? And even with that lie, will bring you to hell. If you, what? If you obey all the commandments and you fail in one, you are guilty of all. So in heaven, there's two, only two people that will be, will be, uh, hallelujah, given the right to enter. The first is perfect people. And no one is perfect. And the other one is the forgiven one. That all our what? All our sins have already what? Redeemed and paid. That's why you are forgiven. Praise the Lord. You should have a right relationship with people. Children, honor your parents. And parents, be honorable to your children. 
Hallelujah. Lead them. I meant to fear God. Lead them to godliness. That's what I'm doing to my children. Amen. I'm teaching them to be what? Independent of me, but dependent to God. Praise the Lord. When you are eating what you're telling your children, oh, pagod na pagod na ako, katrabaho, kaya masarap kinakain nyo. <laughs> Why instead tell, tell them, thank the Lord because He has given me job. And He's the one providing for our table, the food on our table. You are teaching them to be independent to you. You are teaching them godliness. Amen. Independent to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So be honorable to your children. How they will respect you if you are not honorable? How they will believe you are you're a Christian if you are unchristian in your ways, in your mouth, in your speech? Amen. Hallelujah. Husband, honor your wife. Wife, honor your husband. Leading ko. Husband, honor your wife. Wife, honor your husband. Mas maraming husband dito. Don't be bitter. Huh? Praise the Lord. So have a rela right relationship with them. Of course, do not murder, do not steal, do not lie, covet, envy, commit adultery. You know. There's a mark. There's a, uh, hallelujah. Amen. That's what I said. Jesus did it, abolish the law. Amen. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. He did come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. If you have a clear understanding, amen, that is not only physical, but also spiritual in Matthew 5. This included in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember last Friday? I last Sunday, the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5. Amen. He was teaching the people, disciples, that murder is not only physical, but it's also spiritual. If you hate your, if you're angry with your brother, amen, you are murder. Adultery in the heart, in Matthew 5, he says, that's what I caught, whoever looks to a woman to lust for her, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart, in, her, in his heart. And he said, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Amen. But don't make it literal <laughs> that you will pluck your eyes. Amen. But he says there, pluck your right eye that causes you to sin. And, and said, after you pluck it out, cast it from you. Throw it away. Amen. Don't go back and pick it and go to the doctor and you say, can you put it back? He said, cast it away. It could be talking about wrong relationship that you need to cut. You need to pluck from your, from your life that caused you to sin. Amen? Hallelujah. Because you lust for money, you lust for sex, you lust for women. Hallelujah. That those things, I mean, need to pluck it out from your life and cast it out. Amen. You know your weakness is women and then you're watching pornography. Why not pluck it out? Things that will, will cause you to sin. Pluck it out from your lives. Money. Hallelujah. Last, pluck it out. If you have a clear reflection and understanding of this message, there are two things that will happen to you. That there are two things that you will feel. It is, you are sorrowful. Are you sorrowful? 
Maybe you're thinking maybe there's number two, so I will not choose number two. But number two is you are sorrowful. <laughs> but there are two types of sorrow in the Bible. You know, a story of the parable of, uh, not a parable, a story, a true story, where a, a, a rich, young ruler came to Jesus. And this, this man is very excited, very excited to meet Jesus. It is in Jerusalem. Amen. After Jesus entered Jerusalem and is about to fulfill his mission, Amen. This man came and telling teacher, teacher, good teacher. Amen. Why? What good things, good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? You know, Jesus said in verse 18, he said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father. That is what? Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments, right? Your relationship with your neighbor. Amen. And the man said, I have done that. Even in my young, young age, I practice that. You know, Matthew 19, it means Matthew 5 is far. I mean, he didn't hear, I mean, what Jesus spoke in on the Sermon on the Mount. That if you murder, if you're angry with your brother, you murder. If you lust for women, you are adulterer. But in fact, I mean, if, if, if he did it, I mean, perfectly physically, but Jesus said, there is one thing you need to do. Sell all your possessions and give to the poor. And then follow me and you will have heaven's treasure. Jesus just answered what he asked. But the man said, the young man, all these things I kept from my youth, what do I still lack? If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away what? Sorrowful for he had great possessions because this is his God. He disobeyed the first commandment and Jesus knew it that Riches has become his God. Amen. I'm not telling, or God is not telling you that, okay, it's, oh, it's, it's good to, to be poor and then I will just remove this money because it's, it's, it will, it, it's dangerous. And Jesus tell to give to the poor. No. But whatever things that you become your God, amen, God wants you to get rid of that God in your life. And this man, his God is his riches. And he went away. He went away. So, if you heard this message and you harden your heart, you will be sorrowful. Because you cannot let go of your God. There's another type of sorrow when Peter and the disciples, I mean, preached the gospel, there are thousands of people, they heard the gospel. And when they heard it, Peter said, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard the gospel, when they heard the preaching, the sermon, it says they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? If you understand it, and you are sorrowful because of your sins, amen, hallelujah. Peter said, repent. Repent from your sins. Be baptized in the name of the Lord. And you will be saved. Second Corinthians seven ten. Godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. That is a godly sorrow. 
when you cut your heart in your thinking, your sorrow for your sins. He said, do not ignore, but it brings what? Salvation to you. But the sorrow of the word produces death. So I want to ask you again, are you sorrowful? The next thing is, what kind of sorrow? Amen. Yes, whatever, uh, what, ma what matter or whatever hard we try, we cannot, what, perfect obeying the Ten Commandments. There's number four. is to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When the vertical beam and the horizontal beam intersect, that is the center. The origin, the center. And Sabbath means rest. No matter how hard we try, burdened with sin to become good, we are restless because we cannot be saved by our works. But thank God, because our true rest, and the rest that God is given to us is through His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. And Jesus Himself offered this invitation. He said, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. He said, come to me. All you will labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, remember, what is the last word of Jesus? He said what? It is finished. Friends, brothers and sisters, it is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has given us rest by giving his life, Jesus Christ, to sinners like you and me, dirty, unworthy sinners that they gave his life for us. Hallelujah. That by grace we have been saved, saved through faith. And it says there what? It's not by your works. It is the gift of God. Jesus already paid the price for our salvation. So don't be afraid to come to him. I mean, thinking what will cost me. Don't be afraid to come to him because of your sin. All you need to do is to what? To repent from your sins. I will invite everyone, amen, to stand up and we're going to pray. going to pray. If you have a sorrow heart today and when you heard this word you are sorrowful because you cannot let go of your gods I pray for you. God this sorrow God did not come for, from you. Lord your sorrow, this sorrow, oh God, is, comes from the Word that gives death to the Word, to the souls. I pray, O oh God, wherever this man or woman right now, I pray that you will open his eyes of understanding, that he will know, oh God, Lord, hallelujah, 
the way of salvation. And I pray, O oh God, Lord, give him or her the courage, O oh Lord, to let go of the things that are not God's. The things that will not, we cannot find any security in life. The things that will not, we cannot find joy and peace. And obviously, the things that we cannot save us to save our souls, O oh God. God, enlighten his mind, enlighten his heart, her heart in Jesus' name. If you are the man who is sorrowful because you realize that you are in the danger of hell because of your sins, you realize that the cross is not because of what it did for us, but what we did. God, give them, Lord, hallelujah, this refreshing moment, O oh God. Lord, a repentant heart, Lord. In Jesus' name, if you are that person, I pray. Hallelujah. That your eyes will be enlightened. These people ask what we shall do. Of course, all you need to do is to admit that you are a sinner. Confess to God all your sins. Hallelujah. Just take a moment right now. He's right here. Speak to Him heart to heart. And say, God, I'm a sinner. God, this message, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Cut my heart. Save me. Save me. Oh Lord Jesus, now I know, Lord, that I cannot do it no matter hard. I try, Lord, to be good because no one is good. No, not one. But your good life, your perfect life, you came from heaven to this earth to show the world, to save the world. And one of them is a sinner like me. Jesus, wash me by your most precious blood. Save me, O oh God, Lord, from hell. Forgive me from all my sins. Forgive me from all my sins. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you are a Christian, those who are in Christ, they are new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. But as a Christian, you are still not perfect. Maybe there are sins, amen, that is unconfessed sin in your life. You cannot let go. You are ashamed. Hallelujah. No matter how you try, you always fail God. But God is telling you right now, son, daughter, come to me. Come to me, you who are tired and heavily laden. And I will give you rest. Hallelujah. God is merciful and just. Slow to anger and bound in mercy. Hallelujah. There's a time of refreshing that is here right now. A time to refresh our souls. And Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, because it is finished. You have done it all. You have paid it all. And we are saved. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.